And again, if you think about the natural world, what we realize is that when everything is in balance, everything works out perfectly. Everything operates perfectly. But if something isn't in balance, if a, a system is not in balance, it will simply self-destruct. It can't survive. Hi, I'm Liam Naden, and welcome to my podcast, Let Yourself Off The Hook. As someone who has studied success for decades, I have found the formula for achieving your dreams and goals. And it's all to do with how you use your brain. Each week on my show, I will provide you with the tools, resources, and expertise to utilize your brain to its ultimate potential and remove the barriers to your success. And as you will discover, true success in every area of your life only comes when you let yourself off the hook. One of the most frustrating things that seems to be about our life these days is that we can never feel truly happy because there's always some area of our life that we're not happy with. And nowhere is this more true than in, than in the area of trying to create balance between our professional life and our personal life. We can be making lots of money from our business or our career, but perhaps we don't have the time or even the energy to be able to fully enjoy it. We can't do things that we really like to do, such as perhaps take that trip of a lifetime or, or have that different experience that we've always wanted. Maybe we want to take up a hobby or explore an interest. Could be we want to sail a yacht, buy a yacht and sail around the world. Now, we might have the money to do it, but we don't have the time to learn how to sail and to really make the most of what that experience would be. And I can relate to that because it always made me a little bit sad with all of the sailing that I've done around the world when I'd visit these marinas and, and harbours with, filled with beautiful yachts. And what I realized is the people who owned them had put all of this energy, time and effort into being able to buy a yacht, a magnificent yacht, but they never had the time to be able to use them. Most of the yachts just sat empty for most of the time. And it's all really rather sad, isn't it, when you think about it? But creating balance or not having balance in our life isn't just about money, is it? It could be about our relationships. I mean, in our professional life, we might have great relationships with our employees or our employers or our fellow workers or even our customers. We could be really fulfilled in those relationships. But maybe our relationship at home or our relationships with our spouse and with our children, maybe they're not so good. I mean, let's face it, children aren't always cooperative, are they? But it's all very frustrating, isn't it? And it's so draining on our energy and it really feels like life is this constant battle trying to keep everything juggled and just to keep the ship afloat. And it can really get us down sometimes and have us thinking, why do I have all these problems that are stopping me from enjoying my life? That's all I want is just to enjoy my life. Why can't I have some peace? I don't want to have all these problems and things to deal with all the time. I just want my life to go smoothly. And we know that the truth is, if we don't have balance in our life, if one area is going well and another area isn't going well, if we don't have this balance between our professional and our personal life, we can't truly be happy. There's always going to be something that prevents us from being able to take the pressure off, from being able to relax and enjoy what we have. And no matter how well things are going in one area, if it's not going well in other areas, it just takes the shine off all of our successes and all our pleasures. And I think the sad thing is that most people have come to, to accept that this is just the way life is. Life is meant to be a struggle. Life is always going to be a struggle. You're never going to be able to achieve balance. You're never going to be able to achieve perfection and enjoyment and true peace and relaxation in every area of your life. But it doesn't need to be that way. And in fact, it's not designed to be that way. And that's what we're going to cover in this episode. Because the truth is that while most of us at some time or other find achieving balance to be quite difficult, to be quite a problem, actually learning to find balance between our professional and personal lives 
is not as difficult as it might seem. And it's certainly not as difficult as most of us make it. Because what it really is, what it comes down to, what creating balance really comes down to, is simply creating a different way of thinking and some different habits. Doing the things and thinking the things that are going to result in balance in our life. And getting rid of the old thoughts and the old habits that are keeping us out of balance. So we're going to look at all of this in this episode. But before we dive into looking at what to do to bring balance between our professional and personal lives, or to create it, I think it's important to look at and to think about what actually happens when we don't have balance in our life. And even more importantly, why it happens. Well, of course, it's easy to see the effects of the lack of balance. Emotionally and physically, it causes us stress. It means we're putting in a lot of effort, a lot of struggle, not only into an area of our life that's going well, but the area of our life that's not going well. And it just puts this strain and pressure on us. Because imagine, or think about, you're working day and night to get your business working well, or you're working on your career to be successful in that. And when you come home at night, instead of feeling relaxed and comfortable in this wonderful family environment, you still feel under strain. You're not as close to your family as you'd like to be. You feel the connections with them strained because you've lacked the time to be able to develop those relationships. So we find in those situations that things are more intense than they need to be. It's about pushing, it's about trying, it's about trying really to fix things. You know, the really strange thing about all of this is the reality is that being in balance, having this balance between our professional, personal, and really every other area of our life, this is actually our natural state. We're designed to find and live in balance. And how do we know this? Well, it's because balance is one of the fundamental laws of nature. Laws of the universe, in fact. And if you look around you, if you look around in the natural world, you'll find that everything is in perfect balance. And from a cosmic level, being the planets and the stars, right down to a quantum microscopic level, atoms, molecules, everything functions in perfect balance. And it's the same in nature, which we're biologically a part of. Everything lives in this perfect balance. All living things live in an ecosystem where everything is in balance. So having a balanced life really is the way we're designed naturally to be. It's just that we've forgotten how to do that. Life has come along with all its pressures and stresses, and it's knocked us out of balance. It's knocked us out of and got us out of this natural way of living. So the trick is to bring the balance back, to bring us back into a natural way of living our life, to live a life that's actually filled with enjoyment and fulfillment rather than unnatural stress and struggle. So how do we get started with this? How do we move from this unbalanced life to a balanced life? Well, here are a few ways to, to do that. The first thing to do is literally just to commit yourself to achieving balance, starting today. You know, many people say, yes, I want to get my life in balance, and I will get my life in balance, but I'm not there yet. And to get there, I have to just work on this area of my life a bit harder for a bit longer before I can take the pressure off and allow balance in my life. So in other words, I'm just going to work 10 hours a day in my business or 12 hours a day in my career for the next five years, because then the rewards will be worth it. And then I'll be able to have a life of balance. I'll be able to take the pressure off. I'll have more money. I'll have all the money I need. And I'll be able to start enjoying my life in other areas, my relationships, my personal life. I'll put off, I'll delay gratification. I'll put off learning that new hobby or learning that new new thing that I want to do or that experience that I want to have. I'll put that all off just for five years or a certain amount of time. Then I'll be able to enjoy it. By then I'll be organized. 
Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with having a plan, with having a goal of something you want to achieve. But the problem is, that day in the future, someday, one day, or that particular time, often that never arrives. And perhaps you can see examples in, in your own life, or certainly in the lives of people that you know or know of, where they've worked all their life, 20, 30 years, always with a dream of something that they were going to do, of some balance that they were going to create in a different area of their life, but they were never able to do it. They never managed to get to that point where they literally did what they wanted to do. They never created that balance. So you need to say to yourself, I'm going to commit to doing whatever it takes to achieving balance in my life right now. Remember we said all it is is changing a few habits, but it starts with a commitment that you will change the habits. It's like changing any other habit to get anything else you might want in your life. For instance, if you want to lose weight and you know you need to go on a diet, it starts with a commitment. I am going to do that starting right now. I'm not going to put it off any longer. It's going to start right now. And the way to do that is that you need to accept and realize that creating balance is the most important thing in your life. There is nothing more important than having balance. It says in the Bible, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And that's what it feels like when you're not living in balance, doesn't it? It feels like there's a part of you, a real essence of you, that is being destroyed or at least shut down. So that's why it's so important to realize and accept that balance, having balance in your life, is the most important thing you can do, and from there everything else will work out. We have to realize that having balance is actually the key to getting everything that you want. And again, if you think about the natural world, what we realize is that when everything is in balance, everything works out perfectly. Everything operates perfectly. But if something isn't in balance, if a system is not in balance, it will simply self-destruct. It can't survive. And it's the same with us. When we balance our personal and professional lives, both of them work better. In fact, everything works better. We're going to perform a lot better in every area of our life when we don't have the stress of trying to push one area or plug in the gaps of something that we've overlooked. So when you're in balance, you make better decisions. You act in better ways because you're more relaxed, you're more optimistic, you become more productive, and you get better results. Your life is going to flow better. So this is why balance is the most important thing that you can achieve in your life. The next thing we need to do after we've committed to making balance our highest priority by realizing just how important it is, how critical it is, to, and how it's really the only way we can achieve what we really want to in our life in every area, the next thing we need to do is to start changing our habits. And the first habit, the first habit to get into, is, the, is to develop the habit of letting go. Letting go of trying to control our life. Letting go of this need that we have to get everything done. So that means allow some things to stay undone. Don't feel like you need to be in control of everything and you need to manage everything on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Allow things to be messy sometimes. Allow problems to go unsolved without you constantly trying to find a solution and work on it. Just let things go. Now, of course, we find this difficult to do, particularly if we're a, a driven success seeker and we always want the best of everything. Because, of course, we want everything to be as good as it can be. We don't want to leave things hanging. But sometimes the best thing to do is simply to do that, is to allow things to come into balance naturally. How many times have you been working on a problem, something that's really bothered you, and you've tried and tried to, to fix the problem, and then somehow, out of the blue or for some unknown reason, the problem just went away. Maybe you were in a discussion with somebody and there was conflict and you didn't know how to resolve it. And so you just stopped for a while and then they contacted you and said, hey, it's not a big deal or 
they went away out of your life, or just the problem resolved itself with that person. Doesn't this happen quite a lot? And it's designed to be like that. So you don't always need to try and fix everything. Just practice this new habit of saying, it's not a big deal, I'm just going to see what happens. I don't need to fix everything. The next good habit to get into, or the next thing to do, which is related really to just letting things go, not trying to fix everything, is is simply this. Cut your to-do list, and I'm sure you have one, but cut your to-do list in half. Cut it in half. So if you have this list of all the things that you need to do, select the 50% of them that are the most important and get rid of the rest. Take them off a list. Forget about them. Now, with only half of the things that you need to do, that's automatically going to give you more time for the thing that in your, the part of your life that you felt you haven't had time for. It's going to take so much pressure off. You can just focus on a, on a half the number of things, and you'll find that makes a big difference. Another way of doing this, or of looking at this, is to say to yourself, how can I simplify my life? And this is another exercise. Make a list of the things that you think you want or need to do in the next week and ask yourself, do I really need to do this? Would it matter if I didn't do this or didn't have this? What would happen if I didn't? And this also includes things that you feel you need to have in your life. They can be material things or even experiences. So take a look at your life right now and this list of all of the things that you think you need or want, and say, could I do without that and still be happy? Is it really necessary for me to have this for me to be happy? So could I be happy without the bigger house or the new car, or going on that holiday or on that trip? You know, most of us get caught up in this habit, really, of thinking, that the way to have more happiness in our life is to have more and to do more, to cram more in. But doing more and more isn't going to give us more and more of what we want in our life. In fact, I explore this idea in more detail in, in another episode of the Let Yourself Off the Hook podcast. It's episode number 26, and it's called Are You Busy or Effective? And if you haven't listened to that already, you might like to listen to that, because there's a big difference between busy and being effective, being busy rushing around, and getting what you really want in your life. There is a big difference. So the important thing is to look critically and think about everything that you think you want or need in your life to be happy, both on a professional level and on a personal level. What do you think you want your business to look like? How much money do you think you need for you to be happy? What things do you need to have in your life do you think you need to make you happy? What do you need in your personal life? What experiences? What is the way things need to be for you to be happy that you think? Have a look at those and ask yourself, do I really need those things for me to be happy? The sad truth is that many people, of course, think that they need a lot of money for them to be happy. And when they get the money that they think they need to be happy, they're not happy, often because they spend the money on things that don't make them happy. Turns out they didn't need the money after all. In fact, their life would probably have been a lot better and happier if they hadn't had it. One example of this that I often think of is family holidays. You know, I talk to a lot of people who put a lot of pressure on themselves over family holidays. They think they need to create some elaborate, expensive, exotic experience for themselves and their family. They think it's really important to do that. And of course, I'm not saying that an exotic or exciting holiday is not nice or could be great. But perhaps there's another way of doing it. Perhaps it's not necessary. Perhaps you could create the same feelings of connectedness, enjoyment and pleasure in your family without the stress and struggle and strain and organization, let alone the cost, of planning something really elaborate. Because isn't it what you're really looking for? Isn't it just a wonderful time connecting with your family? You don't need an expensive or elaborate holiday to do that. 
you could just as easily have a quiet time at home or maybe go somewhere closer that's, that's not as expensive or difficult to get to. So creating balance in our life between our business and our career, our professional life, and our personal life, our family, our spouse, and our, even just our time with ourself, it really is a lot simpler than most of us realise. But like most simple things, it's not necessarily that easy. But it really comes down to simply deciding and making the commitment that you will have balance in your life, and then changing the necessary habits to ensure that that happens. Because when you do that, not only will you be much more productive, much more creative, get a lot more if, out of every area of your life, but you're also going to enjoy it a lot more. And really, isn't that why we do anything? It's because we want the feeling that we think it will give us. We want to enjoy it. We want to enjoy the results of what we do. So committing yourself to achieving balance in every area of your life, it's definitely worth it. Because here's the thing, when you put yourself in balance, in the natural harmony of the universe, you let yourself off the hook, and you become what you're designed to be, which is the very best version of yourself. This is Liam Naden signing off. Thanks for watching. But before you go, there's some action to take. Hit the subscribe and like buttons and leave your thoughts in a comment below. I'd love your feedback. And if you have friends who you think would benefit from this, please share it with them. Thanks again for your support, and stay tuned for more from me, Liam Naden. And remember, you can only reach your full potential when you let yourself off the hook.